This morning, Uber is announcing a major policy change on how it handles sexual assault and harassment cases. The ride-sharing giant will end the practice of mandatory arbitration starting today. It had forced accusers to mediate their claims in secret. Those who agree to settlements will not be required to sign confidentiality agreements. Uber will also disclose data on sexual assaults and other incidents. Last week, we spoke to the company's CEO, Dara Kashrashahi, about its stance on confidentiality. Um, we have no interest in closing down a uh, person's freedom to, to voice their experience or voice their concerns. So I think one thing that you will certainly see from us is that to the extent you go to arbitration and you want to talk about your experiences or what happened, uh, we're absolutely fine with that. Tony West is Uber's chief legal officer and was an associate attorney general during the Obama administration. He's here for an interview you'll see only on CBS this morning. Welcome. Thank you so much. Let's first talk about this because people who've studied the issue of sexual harassment, certainly in the in the workforce, know about the issue of arbitration. That's but right. For the non-lawyers out there, explain what it does. So basically arbitration is a way to litigate or mediate your, your claims, resolve your claims outside of a court process. Sometimes it's much much cheaper than, uh, less expensive than going to court. Uh, but the reality is, is that it's not the right form for all types of claims. And when it comes to sexual assault, sexual harassment, one of the things we learn is it's very important to make sure that survivors have control and agency, and we want to be able to give them the choice of form. Women have claimed that arbitration in their workforce have kept, kept these reports of sexual harassment private. Right. That you just yeah. did a settlement, it's done, nothing changes in the company. Right. So what's Uber doing to change that? So uh, a couple of things. First, we are not requiring individuals who uh, settle their claims with Uber to sign any kind of confidentiality agreement or NDA, non-disclosure agreement. That would prevent them from telling their stories if they choose. We think that ought to, that decision ought to reside with the survivor. Uh, we're also saying that when it comes to choosing whether a survivor wants to mediate her claims or arbitrate or even go to open court, that choice should be the survivor's as well. A lot of times when the choice is given to go to open court, uh, the company makes it pretty clear it's going to cost. It's going to cost a lot. So how does that posture change in terms of Uber's behavior? Well, I think, I, I, you know, we always want to try to resolve these, these claims in a way that is best for the survivor. That really always has to be our main perspective on sexual assault and sexual harassment claims because you're dealing with a situation in which control and agency has been stripped away from a person. But, uh, but if you can't do that, then we want to make sure that we try to, to litigate these as fairly as possible. And we think that the changes that we've announced today will allow that to happen. What happens, Tony, with what, what's already going on or that's already in litigation? Well, so I'll tell you, we're, our announcement is effective immediately. And so if individuals are in arbitration and they'd rather pursue their individual claims of sexual harassment, sexual assault in open court or mediation, they're free to do that. Well, as recently as last month, there were 14 women, right? accusing Uber drivers of sexual assault or harassment, and they wrote to Uber's board asking that their class action lawsuit be allowed in open court. What's changed on that? Well, uh, again, you know, this, this goes to individual claims of sexual assault and sexual harassment. Um, it doesn't go to all kinds of legal claims. We still are having, a, I think, an important conversation about whether or not this ought to be extended to different types of legal claims. Today, what we are focused on, however, is the safety aspect of this. You know, one of the things we know is that if we can continually enhance the safety of our platform, particularly for women and for survivors, it'll make Uber a safer platform for everyone. Yeah. Dara Khosra, Dara Khosra Shahi, do I say it right? You said it I perfectly. Like yeah. Dara Khosra, CEO. yeah, the perfectly. CEO, has made it clear he has a new mantra, a new sheriff in town. He says, "Do the right thing." Period. That's right. And he has called the past culture deeply unpleasant and very troubling. How do you go about changing a, a toxic culture that some said from within? You're new on the job yourself. You took this job knowing that there were issues at the company. So how do you go about changing it? And how do you stand on how you feel about the company now? Well, I'll tell you, listen, I am, I am proud to be a member of the Uber family and Uber community. Um, and, and cultural change is hard. Any kind of change is hard. But obviously, cultural change is also a hard. It's a journey. Uh, we're in the middle of that journey. We're seeing great results as we're moving forward to actually make sure we're doing the right thing, uh, putting transparency, integrity, and accountability at the core of everything we do. Uh, today's announcement is part of that. Uh, many of the things that you will continue to see uh, throughout the year and, and going into the future will represent that. No, that mantra struck me, Tony, that do the right thing, period. This right. is all part of that. That's right. This is all part of that.
All right, Tony West, thank you for joining us at thank the table. You. It's good to be with you. Nice thank to you. see you. Good to see you.